Aguadillana, por ti yo brindo desde la cuesta del Tamarindo, Aguadillana. Fue en Aguadilla donde nació Rafael Hernández, el aplaudido compositor de nuestra tierra, cuya música, música de Rafael Hernández. Todos los compositores geniales como Rafael tienen un número cuya popularidad alcanza todos los rincones del mundo e identifica al compositor en el extranjero. Un día en que Rafael entraba en los salones de la Casa Blanca en Washington para asistir a la recepción en honor a Puerto Rico junto a don Pablo Casals y al honorable don Luis Muñoz Marín, el tan querido presidente Kennedy le saludó efusivamente diciéndole... ¿Qué tal, Mr. Cumbanchero? que va sonando el cumbanchero bongocero que se va bongocero que se va Riquiti that it goes ringing el cumbanchero bongo player is leaving he's leaving music is transformation and rhythm frees the body of the mind and the mind of the body all bodies but more so the bodies of outcasts of the left out brown bodies women's bodies queer bodies shake off given and adopted identities on the dance floor Rafael Hernández Marín, who wrote El Cumbanchero, lived in a brown body, and that brown body lived in a time of uncertainty. He was born in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico in 1892, six years shy of the transfer of colonial power between Spain and the U.S. during the Spanish-American War. He was born in the shadow of a changing guard, in between. He was born into a fractured identity. He was born colonized, but almost free. He was born leaving. He was born to slip away. Unfixed, as have been most Caribbean peoples under various colonial masters, this in-betweenness means that you're always moving from one thing to another, never reaching it. It implies an ebb and flow within identity, within geographies, within politics. El cumbanchero, bongocero, que se va. In his siren song to others like him, across time and space, amidst disparateria, gibberish, one sentence rings out, Cumbanchero, bongocero que se va, bongocero que se va, the cumbanchero, bongocero who is leaving. The singer Willy Torres said of the words to his song, El Watusi, lyrics, we made it all up as we went along, immediacy, urgency, put to rhythm, a proto-freestyle. As a backdrop, the ghettoized homes of immigrants, and by this point, second and third generations of sons and daughters creating a post, or is it pre, verbal space for survival. A space where the intangible feel of a track is the driving force of a porous bubble. El Cumbanchero is one such bubble, while also being one such person. The words flow into the instrumentation as though bodies through the ocean, moving, moving, moving you along like choppy waves, marking the rhythm of this times percussionist, at times band leader, as in the case of Desir Nas, the cumbanchero himself. The lyrics embody the rhythm, embody the cumbanchero, embody someone you can slip into, slip into the frilly sleeves and wide-legged pants of the cumbanchero, and ride out of a secret site of subversion. Embodying el cumbanchero was the only place for performers like Tito Puente, who you saw first, or Desi, who you saw next, or Celia, who you hear now. Guaracheando, Proto Salsa, Guaracheros y Guaracheras. The song demands a band leader, or a percussionist, a cumbanchero, a cumbanchera. Someone to lead the way, a cloaked Pied Piper. 
The song has infinite corners to hide in, each different for everybody wearing the song. There's lyrics, there's code switching, there's race, there's performative. Eventually, Don Hernandez Marin, who birthed the song, leaves for New York, becoming his own exiting cubanchero, a band leader, refusing fixity from all angles. Out of place between colonial powers, he arrives at the shore to open the door to a new breed of bodies floating between homeland and America. Ismael Rivera, who you hear now, is one such body. In this way, El Cumbanchero denies the audience ever owning him. El Cumbanchero que se va. El Cumbanchero is leaving. While playing a grotesque version of himself fooling them into the belief that they own him, he now is just walking out of the club, leaving the conductor's space. He's now leaving one place for another, one identity for another, mixing them and making up a third. El Cumbanchero que se va. The Cumbanchero moves like a silent specter into a very young Quito Puente in 1965. A frenzied rhythmic characteristic takes over as he flutters about the timbal, pre-verbal, all body, all shaking, lightning fast movement, agility, speed. He's already elusive, like a thunderstorm we just missed. He has already left. Then it's Desi Arnaz in his living room. In his home, he cannot escape the expectation to perform his accent. And even then, he is slippery. He is in control. He leads the procession of this complicated dance of both wearing the imagined frilly sleeves of the cumbanchero and dragging his audience, including his own wife, Lucy, along to a place of not just bizarro cultural acceptance, but reverence. They hang onto his every word and move, not knowing he is shifting the land masses of cultural geographies that make up America much larger than the ones we see in maps. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Cumbanchero, said JFK. Puerto Rico being walked out in front of the international stage as the Caribbean island Kennedy could deal with. He says, see, we're not at war with all the one-starred flag countries of the Caribbean. Kennedy acknowledges, as the voice of America, his position. He watches El Cumbanchero. He speaks aloud their contract. His power makes him the audience, and Mr. Cumbanchero performs, leaving. And yet, this invitation happens around a White House-organized celebration of Puerto Rico's relationship to the U.S., which is a performance, too. It's a mask. It's a cloak. Double forces encountering each other. El Cumbanchero slips through the door to unmask his audience, something he can only do because he too has played the game of nodding yes while saying no. This is Daniel Santos, whose parents moved to New York City in 1924 and who would be drafted to fight in World War II as many Puerto Ricans did for their American masters. Drafted into the war, these young Boricuas were often stationed in troops together, as the U.S. has done historically to brown bodies. Santos and a fellow soldier, even before the song was written, while he was stationed in Okinawa, became known as Los Cumbancheros. Hello, Mr. Cumbanchero. Santos would later become politically active in Cuba, attracting Batista's displeasure. He would play El Cumbanchero in song and in self. El Cumbanchero behaved as a receptacle for the experience of shifting identity and resistance of fixity. In this slippery time, he belonged to both nations in their disparate but nonetheless constant struggle against American domination post-1898. Hernández Marín's last act is to play himself, playing the band leader, El Cumbanchero, in the international stage and on the screen. Aguila y Sol, a film, a last party. Marín burlesquing otherness alongside Cantinflas, Mexico's beloved movie star, himself playing a grotesque burlesque of Mexican stereotype. Together, they slip in and out of our imaginary, mitigated through our screens shaking his body one last time on the dance floor. This exchange opens the door for a cumbanchero to leave again. This time out of the Latin Caribbean, into Jamaica, out of Mexico, across the Atlantic, to Italy, against the current, and back again.
Rastafari. And this reggae that we're going to play is the first reggae that made on the land of Jamaica. And it was made by that little man over there. See him away in the corner with the long dread like my own, Mr. Johnny Moore. Give him a hand for his good works. And the name of the reggae is Rock Foot Rock. Rayo de Luna and the Rockford Rock. Comanchero, a distant cousin of El Cumbanchero, lives in Italy, in disco, in a sparkling envelope for emergent secret lives, for the reinvention of the narratives of the bodies of gays, brown folk from all over, women out late at night. In Italy, they open a separate Western international musical doorway, one that feeds back into the clubs of America and Europe. Rayo de Luna embody El Cumbanchero in a distorted new way, electronic instrumentation, distorted lyrics, confused imperial content. Comanchero, 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 el comanchero que se va. In Jamaica, rock for rock, folding with Rastafarian political imperatives, questioning and condemning the West's imperial and colonial arm across the Afro-Caribbean. El Cumbanchero splits and fractures to mirror the multiple marginalized lives he is lending himself to. Being split is disarming, complicated, but it also brings us together. Together in our aloneness, together floating in the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea. Distortion and evolution and motion take us back to the shores of America, where Liberace will live within and without El Cumbanchero, a complicated Cumbanchero filtered through a white American male lens. His cultural chauvinism is visible, yes, but also visible is his gayness, spoken aloud in the very spaces that wear the domain of predominantly straight men at the birth of this song, at the birth of this underwater current, slow toe dragging underwater and emerging back again in the ballroom. A further complication of the question, who lives in what body? El Cumbanchero splits into so many, it seems to dissolve. Thank you very much. You know, ladies and gentlemen, they say music is a universal language. Well, I found this to be particularly true in Spain. I included in my program there some music of his Latin nature and Latin nature, Latin nature, and Latin nature. And the Spanish and audiences responded very warmly. And I thought perhaps you'd like to hear some of the music that spoke, that spoke so, so well, so well for, us for us over, over there. there. That spoke so well for us. That spoke so well for us. That spoke so well for us over there. <laughs> Liberace flows back into an old Celia Cruz who will flow into Edis Chacon, who burlesques burlesque. La Vedette de America, a Charo-esque creature, which is not a good definition. She appears to be here to excite you, feast on your desire, dance wild, flap strong legs and tassels. And still, we're left like Kennedy after his hello, alone. El Cumbanchero is always moving, frenetically on the timbal, through the song, across the stage, across the screen, always leaving. 
She experiences resonance on the dance floor, experienced pleasure in death. She lives in Joan Kopchak's femme fatale, the male hero, aka the audience, aka America, aka you, aka us, surrendering his resonance to the femme fatale, the diva, as he himself cannot sustain it the way she can. In this way, the hero, the producer, the culture which relinquishes all of our desire onto her, in essence, give up the right to pleasure so close to distress, and in turn, she commands it for us and performs it for us. She wears our own desire while through the specter of El Cumbanchero, announcing that she is leaving. She evolves this process of leaving into a process of the dissolution of self and owning a male pronoun while saying, Oye mi banda tocar. Tocar in Spanish is the same as English as play, but it also means to touch. She dissolves her gender. Susana Losa says, A cyborg diva melts binaries, crosses genders, slips into other species, and in general, samples multiple sexualities and destabilizes dance music with her stammered replies. The digital diva investigates interstitial places, third spaces, and musical margins. Edis Chacon will be our synthesis, the synthesis of all of our cumbancheros. Puerto Rico, you'll come back. 